Sydney had been warned to prepare for a soaking. Overnight, the city's south was hit hard. This morning, locals in Warrenora woke to a river rising fast. Woke up at four this morning, neighbours knocking on doors, removing stuff because the river was coming up pretty quick. And then sort of about eight o'clock this morning, it's right up. I've never seen it run this fast before, ever. Waterfront backyards and a riverside cafe were waterlogged. It came in early this morning. We've all had to come, all hands on deck, to try and save some furniture and make sure that it didn't uh, get into the commercial kitchen. And um, so we've been pretty busy. Just after 10, the order to evacuate was issued, here and downstream at Bonnet Bay. We have to move out because it's flooding a bit and there's no point staying there if we can't get out. So we might move to our cousin's house for a little bit. At Cogra, an aged care home was evacuated in the middle of the night. You can see that sludge mark there. At the height of the downpour, runoff from the Caltex oil refinery at Kernell sent oil and diesel pouring down the road and into neighbouring properties. See it flowing? It's washed all into my backyard. I've got petrol everywhere and black sludge everywhere in the backyard. She says the fumes were overwhelming, especially for her 13-year-old daughter who has COVID. It feels like I'm standing with a bowser of fuel and just breathing the fumes in. Heavy rain delayed the clean-up and the only road in was closed until late morning, making things difficult for the 30 to 40 residents who were also contending with flooding. So first thing this morning, crews have returned. I've got hazmat people at the moment checking the, the, the runoff, checking the puddles to make sure that it is safe. Many residents who were advised to leave their homes today instead opted to stay and keep an eye on the river levels themselves. Heavy rainfall is expected to continue here for the next 12 to 24 hours and the Bureau of Meteorology says the wet weather could continue for weeks. Unfortunately, we continue to be in a La Nina um, event which we know for New South Wales means that we can expect to see higher than average rainfall conditions, which is exactly what we've seen over the past couple of months. And we are expecting La Nina to continue um, throughout the remainder of April. So plenty more of this to come for flood-weary communities. Ruby Cornish, ABC News, Sydney. Conditions have been so intense that Sydney's now had an entire year's worth of rain in just over three months. Throughout the day, one evacuation order after another was announced. A peak commute interrupted by a surge of water on Sydney's northern beaches. But the flash flooding didn't deter drivers, much to the shock of onlookers. Shocking. That's unbelievable. That's quite scary, to be honest with you, you know. Yeah. Worrying. Scary. I mean, on the northern beaches. You know, it's, um, yeah, who would have thought? But it was Sydney's southwest where the deluge stuck around. As the Georges River continued to rise, the order to evacuate followed. It's a giant flood. How are we even going to get home? So I can't just live at school for the rest of my you life. Work. Some residents left work early only to find their homes were already cut off. Well, we've lived here since 1980, supposedly one in 50 flood area and now it's once a month. The notification from the SES said to evacuate by 3 or 3.30, but it's been cut off since 1 o'clock. There was traffic gridlock. Getting in and out was almost impossible. The Nepean River cut roads across Camden and some properties have already gone under. Businesses in Picton CBD prepared for the worst. Usually you can see the bridge here at Menangle, but for the third time in just over a month, it's been submerged in floodwaters. Surrounding roads are also under threat, meaning residents could soon be trapped. Hopefully it shouldn't get as high as they're predicting, but don't know until it happens. A nervous night ahead with the risk still not over. Mark Reddy, ABC News, Sydney.